Hi, welcome to the first video installment of the Doctor Is In series. I'm Karen Anderko, I'm the Director of Research and Education at ILS, and I'm here with my friend and ILS Clinical Director, Dr. Ron Minson. Welcome, Ron. Hi, Karen. It's great <laughs> to be here with you. Likewise. We're going to be talking today about ADD and its symptoms. The symptoms of ADD affect people of all ages and in all aspects of life, in academics, in work, and in social life, and we think that ILS uh, programs can have a positive effect on the symptoms of ADD. So we're going to have a chat about ADD and how ILS might be helpful with, with ADD. Which it is, <laughs> which is nice to know yeah. right up front. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking uh, as well about ADHD, but for those of you, for us, not to have to be cumbersome with our language, we're just going to use the word ADD, and that will cover both ADD and ADHD. Mm -hmm. Great. To get started, should we just talk about what ADD is, what's the definition, what's the diagnosis of ADD? Oh, definitions. People can go online and find that from the APA and so forth, but I like to talk about what it is and what people see. It is a neurological disorder, and it's a disorder in the brain, actually. The part of the brain that handles attention and focusing and concentration is underactive. So it's a neurological disorder that affects attention, focus, concentration. In fact, on the slide that we have that shows the part of the brain that's involved, it's the prefrontal cortex that's involved that has to do with our focus, concentration, but a couple of things that people don't often talk about with ADD is also has to do with empathy with intuition, with insight, as well as maintaining focus and concentration. So are you saying that people who have ADD have their prefrontal cortex is functioning a little differently? Not only is it functioning differently, it's under-functioning. It's hypoactive in terms of the energy it needs to perform the functions that it governs in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're prefrontal cortex is uh, hypoactive, underperforming. Um, the kinds of symptoms that we see are um, a lack of impulse control, which That's is a big one. from yes. that part of the brain, um, and maybe working memory issues. That's another um, aspect of the prefrontal cortex. There are a lot of cognitive issues that you're bringing up, uh, such as focus, attention, but memory, judgment, uh, impulse control, also emotional control, emotional regulation. Uh, those are all part of the function of the prefrontal cortex, definitely. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems that I experienced in my clinical practice was the number of children who were diagnosed with ADD. A majority of them were actually on medications, but they didn't have ADD. They had attention problems, they had distractibility, they had hard time focusing, but many of them had dyslexia. Uh, a reading problem. Every time it came, every time they had to read, they began to squirm or look elsewhere and try to get out of the reading function. Or children with sensory processing disorder. So just inattention alone is not enough to make the diagnosis. Mm. The uh, importance with the diagnosis is that it has to occur inattention, problems with attention, have to occur in at least two or more places. If you only have inattention at school, more likely a school problem. If it's only at home, there might be some issues going on at the household that could be contributing to this child's inattention. So it has to happen or occur in two or more places. It has to be something that interferes significantly with their activity, school work, social engagement, activities in the playground. Should we talk about other conditions that might um, cause symptoms that look like ADD? Sure, and one of those I mentioned already is the dyslexia or mm -hmm. reading problems, uh, auditory processing problems where children just cannot pay attention to what the teacher might be saying, to instructions the parents might give them about getting two or three do things done in a row and they can't hold on to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so auditory processing problems, dyslexia, reading issues, learning disabilities, and sensory processing problems where children just have so much incoming stimuli to their brain that they can't sort out or filter that they're overloaded and they are mm -hmm. not going to be able to attend either. Right. So all of those, anything that can be better explained by another condition should not be labeled ADD. Mm. Having said that, 
there is one caution, however, and that is that you can have children who have both ADD and a learning mm -hmm. disability. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Yeah. What you do is you treat the learning disability first. Treat the dyslexia, treat the auditory processing, treat the speech and language issue, because once that underlying problem, if you will, has been treated, the attention may get better. But sometimes the inattention is still a problem, in which case they have both. Fortunately, ILS can address both learning disabilities as well as inattention. In ADD, you've mentioned that it's a neurological condition. It is. What is happening in the brain with someone who has ADD? That's a great question. What you see on brain scans is that the part of the brain, which is right up here in the right frontal temporal lobe, is hypoactive, it's under functioning. So when you have them do a task, a normal brain, a child with no problem, that part of the brain will light up like a Christmas tree mm -hmm. and it'll show this very active, it's engaged in the attention, impulse control, memory, judgment, processing, all of this gets uh, engaged. In the child's brain with ADD, it doesn't light up. It stays the same as it did before on during the baseline. So I mentioned that the right prefrontal cortex is hypoactive. The question then is, why is it hypoactive? Where does it get its energy? Mm -hmm. the, that part of the brain receives energy from what's called the basal ganglia. And on the picture that we have, you'll be able to see the basal ganglia. There are a number of them. These are clusters of little neurons that have specific functions, a lot to do with motor control, but also with dopamine. Dopamine is the neurotransmitter that goes up to the prefrontal lobe, that part of the cortex, that improves attention. So people who read about this, they'll read a lot about dopamine pathways. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Ritalin and other stimulants act like dopamine. So that's how they wake up that part of the brain. But that they have all the side effects of poor appetite, appetite suppression, sleep problems, behavioral problems, sometimes mutism, they're on a Ritalin, they can't talk. So these are significant side effects that when you use ILS, and we'll talk about more about what we do and what that is, you're stimulating the basal ganglia naturally, and they are sending more dopamine up to the prefrontal cortex, and over time this becomes normalized so it remains permanent. Mm -hmm. And even kids who uh, have been on medication, they can get off medication by using ILS. Okay, so you mentioned that we should be addressing the learning differences first, and with ILS that is. So it must mean that through ILS we're awakening the basal ganglia, we're stimulating it, we're increasing dopamine flow, is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Whenever you're using ILS, well, let's talk about why. How do you get the basal ganglia to wake up? How do we get them on board? How yeah. do we get them to, to jump rope? Mm -hmm. You do it through stimulation. The whole brain functioned uh, with stimulation, doesn't it? Electrical mm -hmm. stimulation. Mm -hmm. So when you use sound, part of ILS, when you use vibration, the bone conduction, when you have movement, all of those send pathways, energy, stimulate the basal ganglia. And those pathways <coughs> increase the creation and production of dopamine, which wakes that part of the brain up. By using sound, visual input, vibration and motion movement mm -hmm. for the body, mm -hmm. we are adding input to the basal ganglia. And of course the cerebellum is also right. involved. Right. So we're in giving input to that area, this sends input to the right prefrontal cortex and that improves memory, attention, concentration, all the things we've talked about. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about dyslexia, we're talking about language input, we're talking about music, and the brain uses the same pathways to process music than it does to process language. When you talk about sensory processing disorders, a lot of it has to do with improving overall brain function. One of the main functions of the cortex, actually, is inhibition. So frequently, kids who are overreactive to touch, to sound, to smells, to taste, the brain, the cortex, is not inhibiting the input. So mm -hmm. everything comes in too strong, too loud, too bright. Um, and so the overall treatment using ILS is to inhibit that, but also to help the body improve the pathways, the bottom-up pathways, all the sensory input, 
that goes to the brain before it gets to the cortex, it has to be processed. Mm -hmm. And frequently there are problems of processing before it even gets to the brain that are the problem, and ILS improves that processing subcortically. Mm. That sounds sort of exactly opposite from a, the standard approach for, let's say, ADD, which is, oh, you're, mm. you're not able to pay attention, you can't get your homework done on time, so let's put more structure around you, let's put mm. up some scaffolding, and let's, uh, let's approach it as a top-down pro uh, problem. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? yes, exactly, and more structure, and of course any kind of punishment or cajoling or uh, pressure on the child just makes the situation worse because then it interferes even further with that higher brain function. Yeah. And at best it's really just a band-aid because yes. we're not addressing the underlying issue. That's right. Mm. It's optimistic to think of ILS that way, that we're treating thing, we, we're treating issues from the bottom up and really addressing neural pathways and correcting things that have effects uh, like attention. Absolutely. You can imagine my enthusiasm when I trained to in this work of using sound uh, and vibration and bone conduction as an approach to help kids with learning problems. And I also saw that many of them who had attention problems also got better. And that mm -hmm. led me into look more deeply at the whole issue of ADD and what caused it, what's underlying. And it became really clear that we have an intervention that has non-invasive, has no side effects, and it works with, as opposed to medications, which was the tool that my psychiatry background had mm -hmm. provided me with. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like using medications because of all the side effects. So here we have something that is medication-free and it works. I had a lot of excitement around that. You mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, so the ILS programs uh, are really a multi-sensory therapy, is that right? They sure are, yes. We talk about integrated listening as being a multi-sensory system to improve brain function. And we know that the higher brain function, all of that is dependent on brain, lower brain organization. Or if I could restate that, brain organization is dependent upon subcortical organization. Subcortical organization are all those white pathways that pick up information from touch, from taste, from smell, from sight, from hearing, and they take the information and bring it into the spinal cord, through the midbrain, and finally up to the cortex. So the cortex, the development of these higher brain centers is totally, totally de dependent upon a foundation of subcortical input. Mm -hmm. If there's something not quite right with subcortical input, there's going to be problems with there are going to be problems with higher cort cortical function as well. When you say body organization leads to brain organization, yes. um, <clears throat> can you talk about that pathway a little bit? So when I'm standing up, I'm feeling gravity, and my joints are aware of the pressure from gravity. Anytime I move, we have these little receptors in every, every single joint that have this wonderful name called proprioceptors, which means your own experience of input. And so these are giving my brain information about where my body is in space, how much pressure something takes. Oh, so many kids that I worked with had poor proprioception. They couldn't judge or gauge how much pressure they use on the pencil. They're mm -hmm. always breaking the pencil leads or they're tearing through the paper because their proprioceptors are asleep. Mm -hmm. They're not registering the amount of input that's coming in. Mm -hmm. So joint receptors, muscle receptors, balance from the vestibular system, coordination, these are the pathways that are involved in body organization. And these are the things that ILS programs they help sure to exercise. Do. Absolutely, yeah. we yeah. exercise. We use them as part of the stimulation to the brain. And by using them, we're giving input to those subcortical systems and helping them to become better organized. Their organization will improve brain organization. It's so important. Mm -hmm. Again, highlighting bottom up, um, a bottom up approach rather than a top down. Exactly. Approach, yeah. Yes. Thanks so much for spending time with me talking about this. I think it's really helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Do you mind giving a little recap of what we've talked about and how ILS is helpful for symptoms of ADD? Super question. I don't mind a bit. Um, I have gone down several little pathways that branch out, and <laughs> <laughs> I love talking about this, so I get excited about one topic that leads me to another. That's not ADD, it's just something. <laughs> so, in summary, ADD and ADHD are neurological issues that have to do with brain function. 
the part of the brain that has to do with attention, focus, concentration, and other factors we've spoken about is right here in the right prefrontal cort uh, temporal cortex. And it gets its energy or input to function normally from what's called the basal ganglia. These are clusters of little neurons inside the middle, deep, deep, deep part of the central part of the brain that receive input from our senses and send dopamine, the neurotransmitter for that particular part of the brain to function, to the prefrontal cortex and through sensory stimulation, dopamine pathways, improved function of the prefrontal cortex, attention and impulse control, concentration and focus all improve. How yeah. does ILS affect that pathway? And then the way ILS affects the pathways to attention and concentration are through input, sensory input. The auditory system is a strong input to the basal ganglia, as is movement, vibration. The vestibular system in our inner ear is activated by the bone conductor that we're using, as well as movement, the balance, coordination activities of the movement part of ILS. So this sensory input auditory, visual, vestibular, and movement all send input to the cerebellum, into the basal ganglia, and from there to the brain centers that govern higher brain functioning. So ILS is, is beautiful. It's wonderful. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, it's been such a pleasure talking to you. I always appreciate our conversations, thank and you. I think you helped all of us learn a lot more about ADD and inattention and also how ILS can can help with both of those. Well, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome and I, I really enjoy our time together as well. Thanks. You're welcome.